Welcome back, Vendetta Sports Media YouTube channel. Uh, we brought we got the best and the brightest here. Joining us from the first episode is Matt Hannafin, Jackson Fida, and the guy who cannot be seen down at the bottom is Chickster. He's been having some camera issues. He's going to be uh, giving us picks from the shadows. And joining us in the second chance bracket, we've got Anthony Miranda. Fellas, really quick before we get in, how are we doing tonight? Good. Good. I'm also good. I, I am not good. I am not good. <laughs> I, I'm not like... And that's not a lie either. It's not like I got a bad haircut or anything. It's just literally I can't get my camera to work. And it's like I bought like an expensive ass camera too. So this shit's kind of annoying. But you know, uh, we're we're gonna have to power through without seeing. I'm, uh, without I'm in the shadows. Tonight. But yeah, he's gonna be making his picks from the from the shadows. Uh, like I said at the top here, this is gonna be Vendetta's second chance bracket. Uh, in case you guys were wondering we're gonna be going through all of the picks for the second chance bracket same thing like the first time we're gonna be talking through every single matchup it's gonna be majority rules we got five this time so we don't need Woo! a coin flip we don't need the rigged coin flip that was always had <laughs> the so, coin flip where it landed on heads 19 straight times and we, we don't need to have matt hannafin uh flying across his room trying to find the coin he kept losing <laughs> it was it was part of the cinderella run honestly that, so. that is true uh, we're going to jump right into it, into the no, East we're not. bracket. No, we're not. I have some stats here. I have to, I have to <laughs> un unveil. That, that is fair. Chickster, when he wants to talk, he's going to have to probably cut us off a lot. So we just, we're probably just going to have to get used to it. Okay. Yeah, let's, no. let's hear the stats before we begin. And it's like, it's like a sneak attack too. Cause you can't really see me. Like I can't even like hold my hand up. I'm just like, and, what? And you, are, you are plenty loud. We all know that. So it's going to okay. be kind of jarring sometimes. Now, do you, do we want to start? Do we want to start with the conferences, uh, the records from the conferences, or do we want to start with the records from our bracket per se? What do y'all think? Let's do the conferences. All right. The conferences. Quick. Yeah. You have, a, you two have a lot to explain here. Okay. <sighs> yeah, so, us too. Yeah. I'll save that one. Okay. For last. Uh, so the conferences, at least for the power conferences or most of the power conferences, we have the ACC, the ACC went eight and one. So, uh, even though the ACC has gotten a lot of hate in recent years, it is, uh, one of the best in, uh, the NCAA tournament right now. Uh, the big 12 is seven and six. Very so, so not, not what you expect. Uh, the big East is six and zero oh so far. Uh, the big 10 is six and 10. The PAC 12 is six and three. The SEC not did not have a good showing. It was five and six, and then the Mountain West is four and five, riding on San Diego State like for dear life. So, um, I I need an ex explanation from the Mountain West guys because we rode hard, and I you guys even awesome. convinced me on some of them. No, we didn't. No pause. Uh, that to go with Mountain West, and uh, this is this has not gone well. So um, I'm gonna need some answers here, please. Hey, one more win and we're at 500. That's that's, <laughs> that's a dub. Love, that's, that's that's fair. optimistic. Listen, that's very optimistic. In, in terms of the conference getting money, they'll have 10 units, which is the most they've ever had. So that's positive. With this so tournament, there was like, but there was like six Mountain West teams. I know. Yeah. I, that's what I know. I'm listen. I'm leaving out. I'm purposely leaving out context, so I'm not. <laughs> just trying to trying to make this I'm trying to I'm trying to be sunshine and rainbows. No, uh I don't know what the hell we saw from Mexico. That was awful. Um they were two point favorites against Clemson and to be PJ fair, Ball I liked Gerard New Mexico and, and I did not Clemson. like Clemson. I mean we'll talk about Clemson throughout this, but uh yeah. they completely just took a giant dump on New Mexico from start to finish for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um Utah State was fine until they lost by 39 to Purdue, which was a completely awful showing. Um, uh, Nevada, don't know what the fuck that was. The final that was, seven that was hard to watch. It was, that was hard to watch. Um, I'm, I tried to block it out from my brain, but when you're up 56-39 with seven and a half minutes left, you probably should win the game. Hot take. Um, <laughs> They weren't being know. as aggressive. They Dayton was hitting threes. They're one of the best three point shooting teams in the country, and they just let go of the rope. Um, Nevada's ball security was also awful. They couldn't handle their press that well. Um, they were dribbling the ball out of bounds, kicking it off their foot. Just a completely awful seven and a half minutes to end up one of the better seasons in school history. <laughs> what um, was funny is I saw it when it, when it was 56 39. 
right? I was at a track meet, so I was like, and I was checking the scores. So I'm like, okay, that they win that they won that one, right? So I closed my phone, focused on the track meet, you know, crowd control, whatever my event and all that shot put. Love that fucking event. You cannot see the sarcasm on my face. Please understand that I am not thrilled to be doing shot put. But then I, I look back and then I see I see the slack is going off about Nevada and I was like, what the fuck is the problem? Like they were up 17 points and I look and I'm yeah. like, there's no fucking way, no fucking way we're doing this. So I was I was a little sad about that one because I did pick Nevada in the first round. But I, I yeah. blame McDonough's one fucking hundred percent. I blame McDonough's. <laughs> he fucking <laughs> had to open his fucking mouth. And it's I'll take I'll it's take some blame for that because I did on our Vendetta social media account. I did have a tweet where it was like Jared Lucas and Nevada are rolling, and it was that seventeen. I think it was up to seventeen when I tweeted it, that. It so sounds I'll like you guys. Blame. It sounds like you guys are superstitious. Uh, yeah. I'm superstitious as shit. I, yes, I'm a little superstitious <laughs> now after that shit. But back the back donuts curse. I was like, ah, is it really a bag? Donut? No, I, I believe, believe that shit. Real. It's a fucking. That shit. It, that's just real. If, if you've been around the different channels over the over the the several months or years, whatever, the Beck Donuts curse is like a legit thing. Like I it's, need it's not a I need sports. It makes no sense. Even I, soccer, he comes <laughs> in. De Bruyne gets hurt two seconds after he says something for the second <laughs> Champions League final in a row. It made <laughs> no fucking sense. And then this shit, like. Yeah, no, this was awful. Um, Colorado State also laid a dud right after Nevada lost to Texas. I, I had I had Colorado State too. I I, I kind of liked how yeah. they were playing, so I I'll, I'll take some like the the Lobos and Colorado State. I had them going a little bit farther, but yeah. uh, Boise State also missed like seven hundred layups against Colorado. That's not great. No, um, no, it was just it was just a brutal like first round. It was the same like at the same time like. I do this shit every year. We do this shit every year. The guys who actually follow this conference route, um, at least the last two years, were like, man, this conference is going to do well. Like, it's better. It's the best it's ever been. And that literally how it was during the regular season. And then it comes to the tournament, and they just disappoint every single year. Have, it, dude, it's like clock. Like, I'm going to talk my shit. I'm, I'm going to talk myself into it next year. Like, it's just going to happen again. Is, is Mountain West ever beating changes. the allegations? Are they beating the Listen, allegations? Listen, man, it's certainly not right now. Probably. I still not. think <laughs> I still not think unfortunate seating doesn't help though. Yeah, well, yeah, like seating doesn't help. That Utah State time, like, the committee looks better in the end because of it, because of what uh, that used to, that Utah State team shouldn't have to play a one seed in the second round, and I think yeah. they would probably obviously play better without playing uh, Zach Eadie Purdue team. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I think like if the seating was better, the results probably are better. But thirty nine points. Like, <laughs> they're cuffs left too already that's funny okay uh even though we're doing the second chance thing i know gary i know you're hosting but uh even though we're doing the second chance thing i did want to go over the record for our official vendetta bracket that we did make um because yeah. that's still in play um so in the first round we went 20 and 12 uh 20 wins 12 losses so we got 12 wrong in the first round uh the second round we got we went eight and eight we went 500 uh so we had eight losses. We still have a live right now. We have seven alive that we originally picked in the Sweet 16. Uh, part of our Elite Eight, we had six alive still. So six alive in our Elite Eight. That, and then our final four is still intact. So and I think I think the the more you get into it, like my like on my bracket, my Elite Eight is still intact, which is good. But then like once you start losing those, and then you're like, all right, you're kind of fucked. So yeah. I think our our final four is still intact, so that gives us some hope to, to maybe save some face here. Those, those first two rounds, of course, are always a shit show. So, yeah. But, uh, all right, Garrett, back to you. You got it. Back to you, Garrett. All right, we're getting back on. We're getting back to it. Uh, we're gonna go over the East bracket here first. We've got the uh, number one overall seed UConn going up against the five seed San Diego State. Uh, a lot of this, I, I may be playing host here. A lot of this is gonna be deferring to the the college basketball nerds here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the floor up to you guys. What are we thinking on this one? UConn, one hundred percent. If you're if you're not picking UConn, I I I fucking love Dan Hurley. I, Dan Hurley's I, awesome. That yeah. guy, that guy is always angry as the coach should be. He's like, my team's only up thirty three points. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, I'm with that brother. I'm I'm putting my hand up like sketch. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I I can agree with that shit. Okay, like if you are satisfied as a coach, like you're not pushing your guys hard enough. He's like, 
up 33 in the second round or the first round or whatever. He's like, no, this is not championship basketball. Hell yeah. Talk your shit. Keep your guys focused. I'm going Dan Hurley and UConn for sure. Well, that's the thing about coaching that people don't understand. Like, you still got to coach your dudes regardless Absolutely. of the And so it's like, like people were like, yeah, people are like, why is this, like, this is corny, this is whatever, this is a bit. Like, no, dude. Like, if you're a championship level head coach and if you're a championship contender, that gives that had- you all the more incentive to – to coach your guys as hard as possible for a full forty minutes, like Matt, Matt Hannafin, I I don't even think it's champion. I think it's just it's just coaching in general. Okay, no, I was, I, but I'm just saying, like yeah. for him, like it gives him even all the more incentive to do that. Yeah, like, like I you know, would. You got to set a stand. Like you, you know the standard here because they won a title last year. But yeah, no, I'm with uh, you. Like regardless, regardless. I was coaching a team, and we were significantly better than that team, and we were, and it sounds silly, but we were up forty points on, but we played like shit the entire first half. So we went into our little space, and I'm literally chewing these guys out. I'm like, these guys are so fucking ass. You guys missed 20 fucking layups. This We have already had five five turnovers against Bowie. Like, this, this team is not good. What are we doing? Like, like, get it together. And then we won by 80, which is what we needed, okay? But it was a much better 80. They started running the clock, so we had less time. But, like, yeah. you have to keep your guys, like, especially if you're a much better team like UConn is, to some of a lot of these teams, he's keeping his guys focused. He's keeping his eyes on the main goal. And even though there hasn't been a back-to-back champion since uh, Florida in 06 and 07, I think UConn has a really good chance at that. Did you see what he said after uh, their game this weekend against Northwestern? No, what did he say? In the locker room, he was like, he was in the locker room. He's like, yo, let's just keep blowing all these fucking teams out. Like, or he didn't say that, but that's pretty much like what he was saying. He's like, let's blow, the, let's just keep blowing these teams out of the tournament. Like, it was yeah. just like. That's that's a, that's an awesome quote to say, like in the NCAA tournament, not like game twelve of a non-conference play. Like, yeah, my 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 favorite player right now, Victor Wembanyama, says, "If I'm if I am the best, I must be the best," or something like that. If like if that's my destiny, then like yeah, if you're gonna be the best, go blow all these fucking teams out. We're going UConn. Yeah, I'm, I think I think UConn's winning this. I I think Miranda, I'm UConn. assuming you're going UConn as well. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty hard to pick against them. I'm just Clean surprised we're not going with the Northwest. We're not going. Has there any ha, also like has there been any team in your guys' opinion just through these this very small two game scam sample? Has any team looked better? Maybe not for the UConn, UConn, though. Probably not. Um, Nothing better than UConn, no. No, like, just because they're so good on both ends of the floor. But I would say the Zags have uh, played really well through two games. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, obviously you can you can make a case for like I don't know, you can make a case for um, maybe maybe Duke. I was yeah. just gonna say Duke if it's really that maybe on the, on maybe the like Tennessee, even though they almost they couldn't shoot against Texas. Like, there's been a couple of teams that have looked like really really good. Maybe, well, yeah, I'll, talk, maybe I'll talk about Gonzaga. yeah, I'll talk about Gonzaga too later. But yeah, like Duke Duke yeah. played really well. I underestimated Duke coming into yeah. the tournament. So yeah. I think or I guess the difference is like underestimated Duke too. Yeah, a lot of there have been multiple teams that look uh, have looked good or even great. UConn just literally looks untouchable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, like the the Klingon, the new, the, uh, the the caravans, like they're so connected and so gelled. The the, the, the Stefan Castles of the world, like I don't know. It's gonna be and the sense of intensity, yeah, the sense of intensity too, like the intensity yeah. they, they bring, like they're they're coming to you every every play. All right, mm-hmm. what All we right. got next? Next up, we got the uh, three seeded Illinois versus two seed Iowa State. What are our thoughts? This one's gonna be tough. I Illinois I like really good. Yeah, I like Illinois' offense is clicking. I really like. Uh, I have. Iowa State's defense, though, um, I think, and I think even though Illinois' offense can play really well, I think if you start, you know, if you get a couple turnovers here and there, they start coming in bunches. I think, um, I think when you disrupt their kind of flow of of the offense, they it, it doesn't click as much, obviously, and then they start giving up the ball. And I think that's where Iowa State uh, kind of they kind of capitalize, and that's. Like their defense travels. Their Iowa State's offense is okay. It's not as good as Illinois, but their defense is nasty to where they'll get points in quick bunches for me. Um, and you know they'll they'll 
they'll keep themselves in the game and try to just get a couple uh get a couple get get some momentum off of uh defensive turnovers. They have been the thing with Iowa State though that makes me lean them like yeah they have the defense but they're shooting is like through these two games. Yeah. Um it's been they're hitting like nearly 50% of their threes. Yeah. And That's so nice. like that I don't know I think that gives them like the slight edge like I think I I trust Iowa State's defense a lot more than I trust Illinois. Exactly. Um and I don't think the op- I don't think the gap between like obviously Illinois offense is better, but I don't think the gap is as big as people seem to be. Like something, like something Illinois is facing. Something's gonna have to give here, as Gary has on the screen, like 84, 85 points. Illinois scores points per game, and yeah. Iowa State limits to sixty points per game. If I had to take a guess, like defense travels, like defense is going yeah. to be able, and so like you're gonna have to, and then you got to be able to stop them from doing that. And I think what also plays to Illinois' advantage is just the pace. Mm-hmm. Like, I think they're going to try to make this more of a half-court game. Like, they're going to try to muck it up a little bit more. And at a tournament yeah. game, the further along you go, it's going to be hard to win at a, in a, at a very quick pace like Illinois plays at, or at least, I think, compared to Iowa State. So I'm going with Iowa State here. But it's Iowa it's State. close. But that's where I'm getting. It's going to be a good game in the first round, or in this round. All right, we've got one for Iowa State. Uh, Iowa Fida, State well. Miranda. We got two. Sorry, two. It's it's hard to it's hard to get the picks because I can't see it. But okay, we got two for Iowa State then. I'm in the shadow. That's fair. I, I'm going Iowa State. I'm excited to see Taryn Shannon against this Iowa State team. Bad dude, but God, he can play basketball. So it's gonna be <laughs> kind of fun to watch what he can do. But yeah, I mean Illinois defense. Not great. I think that's going to be what carries through. I was looking through, like, when they play, like, good teams, the only team that kept under 70 points was Iowa, and that game was an absolute tragedy as an Iowa fan. So Mm -hmm. every other team's racking up points. I don't think they'll be able to deal with Iowa State. I think Iowa State will uh, slow down Shannon and win. Yeah, I'm probably leaning. I don't know. I I wasn't huge or super high on – either of these teams i know i probably have been disrespecting iowa state a little more than i should have for no reason but i just wish they had a little bit more offensive upside which i think illinois has and i think they have the best player on the floor in this matchup but you i think i'll go with you guys saying that defensive travels and i do think iowa state just overall is a better team both these teams are hot too winning both their tournaments coming into it right yeah so I'll, I'll go. I'll go Iowa State with, with everyone. All right. So the majority is leaning Iowa State. Just for shits and giggles, I was going to pick Illinois, but I don't, I don't. I don't hate the pick. So we've got UConn and Iowa State moving on to the Elite Eight. Moving down to the West bracket, the one seeded North Carolina Tar Heels playing against the Alabama Crimson Tide, who are seated fourth in their in their uh, region. What are our thoughts? I'm I'm gonna go with my Final Four team. I chose uh, North Carolina. I'm, I, I chose North Carolina. I'm kind of sticking with that. Um, I, I, I still think they are the biggest threat to UConn to win right now still. I mean, like, I like I thought UConn was like, I kind of wish UConn was on the other side of the, of the region playing UConn in the final because I feel like those were the two of the best teams. Um, so I'm still I'm going to stick with North Carolina as my uh, as this pick. So I had them in the final four. I, I haven't beaten Alabama, but Alabama's pace is – Wow, I didn't. I did not realize how fast those oh, guys yeah. are going to be fucking moving. Those guys so, are moving, and, and they and they're scoring on anybody right here. So, uh, really, the thing is, is UNC going to be able to keep up and get enough stops uh, along the the way? And I think they can do that. I think they're a talented team. They are, as some have said, they they got draft picks. So, I mean, having those draft picks usually helps out. Uh, but you know, I'll, you gotta you gotta you gotta get Alabama to play at your pace. You gotta be able to slow them down. Um, and usually when you're playing against a really fast team, that's the best way to beat them is you got to get them to slow down, take care of the ball. Don't let them, don't let them just run the court as they like to do. Like we gotta, we gotta be able to slow these guys down. So, uh, it'll be like, and you can see they, they score 90 points a game, but they also give up 80. So if you can get them to yeah. play at your pace, um, they, you will score on their defense. Um, the way they've been beating everybody is ironically enough, it's just scoring more. Than the other team, which I know that's the game of basketball, but you know what I'm saying. 
Well, well like both both these teams, like obviously Alabama's pace is like on the scale of one to ten, it's at a thirteen. Yeah. Um, but North Carolina will play at pace too. Yeah. And so that's where it's like that's where I think, but I think North Carolina guards better than Alabama does. Right. Like I think right. defensively they're 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 a lot more in sound and too. Um, like even yesterday, I wasn't incredibly impressed. Like, yeah, it was it was a slow paced game. But I wasn't super duper impressed with Alabama's defense against Grand Canyon. I just thought Grand Canyon was just making a shit ton of bad decisions in the half court. Um, and I don't think that's going to be the case against the North Carolina team with RJ Davis, with Harrison Ingram, with Baycott. Like I just don't think I just I don't see that being um, the case. Uh, yeah. And so I that's for I I think I lean North Carolina. Like I think North Carolina. It, I think it's going to be a high scoring game. Mm-hmm. But I think North Carolina finds a way to edge them out just because. They're, I think they're a better offense and they're a better defense than than Alabama is. Yeah, it so pains you for UNC. Pains me to say it, but I think this Carolina team's actually so good. So do I. It starts with the two senior, like veteran leaders with Baycott and Davis, just carrying everyone else around them. Minus the UNC or the NC State game, which that team's like a team possessed, a team on a mission. I don't understand it at all. Whatever they've won ten of their last eleven games, they look really good. I don't think Bama's going to be able to deal with it, and they look really good against Tom Izzo. I thought that was going to be a game. Yeah, it was Michigan State team, and they just ended up killing them at the end. I so, just don't yeah. think they had the the talent. I don't think Tom Izzo had the talent. That Michigan State no. team was not very talented, so I think that yeah. does play a part. But you know, they got him for like a good ten minutes, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, and that was coaching. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, for the same reasons, I think Alabama's had two favorable matchups too so far in the tournament, and mm-hmm. I would take. Uh, I'm confident in taking North Carolina's offense to score, uh, to keep up with Alabama, and then also I think their defense is going to be very tricky for Alabama as they, like I said, two, two matchups that you know weren't the worst. So I expect, uh, and then with the senior guard too. I'm going for those of you who are curious watching the uh, video here, the over under set for the game is 173 and a half. So Take Vegas the is also v- Vegas is also expecting a high scoring affair. I'm also leaning with the Tar Heels here. Uh, the other matchup out west is the sixth ranked Clemson Tigers playing the Arizona Wildcats, the number two seed in the region. Let's throw it to well, let's throw it to Jackson Fida first. Jackson Fida, what are our thoughts? Uh, I think. Take everything aside, it has to be Caleb Love versus North Carolina in the Elite Eight. I'm leaning <laughs> that. Like, it's got to happen just so we can drop, like, 30 on him. But I, I've actually – I mean, Arizona kind of gave me a scare at the beginning with that Long Beach State game. Um, but I thought they handled – I mean, I didn't really get to watch because I was doing something else. But it th- sounds like they handled Dayton pretty well. Clemson's looked really good. Obviously, we talked about the New Mexico game. I don't know where that Clemson team came from because they were not showing up like that towards the end of the year. But they looked really good in that. And in the Baylor game, too, the way they closed out. Like, obviously, Baylor missed free throws, all that stuff. But Clemson still had to close out the game with their star player out of the game at the very end, which was impressive. So I think it's going to be close. But I'm leaning Arizona just because of Caleb Love. Honestly, I think he sees the Carolina potential matchup, and he is going to be feeling himself this weekend. All right, Anthony Miranda, what's up? Uh, I was going to say, I think uh, Arizona was my, uh, you know, tertiary dark horse uh, team to win it all. So I'm I'm going to be going Arizona. Um, I think they've looked, you know, they looked fine. They've looked good throughout the first two games. Obviously, I wouldn't say they're not uh, one of the top teams that has, like, blown you away. But, I mean, they're winning games, never really been in doubt. Uh, I'm also going to expect uh, Caleb Love. I think he had a, more of a quiet game one. Started, or maybe it was a good game one, more of a quiet game two. I can't exactly remember. But, yeah, I'm going to take him. Uh, I think they just have – the offense is, is too much, I believe, for Clemson. I think um, Clemson to be so streaky throughout the year. Maybe they're on on one right now, but I um, New, New Mexico just didn't even the way they shot. It, it would have been hard, incredibly hard to even win that uh, lose that game. And then I like I had Baylor maybe being upset by New Mexico. I think 
um, you know, like a lot of people, that was a possible upset team. So I wasn't too surprised. And then Jacoby Walter, I think, went five for 11 from the free throw line. And while they did close out, that game could have been a lot different down the stretch because he missed all six free throws, I think, with under 10 minutes left in the second half. So I'm not a huge believer in the Clemson team, so I'm going to go with the team I think is better and take Arizona. All right, so we've got two for Arizona. We're going to send it to Manhattan for what we're thinking. I'm thinking Arizona, too. To Miranda's point, I was going to bring up, like, that game. It could have been a Baylor in this game instead of Clemson if they don't go 16 or 26 if Walter doesn't go 5 of 11. Free throw shooting sometimes makes a difference, but Clemson also missed a few, a few of their free throws. Um, I just think Arizona is the better team. I think I like Caleb Love. I like I think Ballo could be a little bit of a mismatch for for PJ Hall. Um, Clemson does look like a team like they like they started the season winning nine straight games, eleven of their first twelve. It feels like they kind of found their found their mojo back a little bit um, in these last two games, but I still think Arizona um, outlasts them in the end. So the majority is leaning towards Arizona, but we cannot leave out Chickster down there at the bottom. Chickster, what are your thoughts? Um, I'll hand raise. I know you can't see it, but it's in the shadows. Um, hey, hand raise. I didn't think Clemson was all that good. I mean, I know you know they beating Baylor. It's an impressive win. Free throws or not. Um, but I, I also, I also still have Arizona. Um, the only thing I really noticed about Arizona is they finished the games really well, um, especially in the second half. I mean they'll I mean they'll they'll go put up points in bunches, but uh, you know, they've started games out really slow. They kept playing with their food and you know, that might work against, you know, a Long Beach or a Dayton. But you know, Clemson, Clemson Clemson's a ACC ooh, ACC? Yes, ACC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're an ACC yeah. team. Like, and I know like the last video kind of ragged on the ACC, but you know, ACC is the ACC. They like Arizona can't do that shit. Like Eric, like they can't do that against you know a power conference school like like Clemson, who is actually playing very hot. You know they they they're comfortable playing in close games. Um, that that can't happen here. Like Arizona, uh, and Arizona can't get behind or they can't they can't keep playing with their food the entire game. Like they need to be able to start fast. They need to be able to say, hey, we are the two seed. We are better than you, and they need to go out and win this game. You guys talked about Caleb Love and the uh, potential North Carolina matchup. Um, I agree with that, and I think he he might be the one that kind of kickstarts it all for them and kind of gets them in that rhythm. But uh, yeah, Arizona can't start slow here. They got they got to be able to play um, and not play with their food here. So I'm I'm still Arizona. I don't Clemson. I still don't think Clemson's all that good. But you know, for what it's worth, they did win their first two games and beat a three seed Baylor. So that's nothing to uh, scoff at. So it's entirely they, they've looked like they can guard too. So that's mm-hmm. another thing where it's like. They've been really, really, really good defensively. I think through these first two games, I don't know how much that holds up against one of the best, one of the better offenses in the nation in Arizona. Yeah, even though they just did it against Baylor, but you know. So we're moving on to the right side of our bracket here, moving up top to the south. We've got the uh, number two overall seed in the tournament, Houston, going up against Duke, who we kind of touched on at the top. One of the better playing teams in the tournament right now. It seems like some teams, some. Uh, some folks might have been sleeping on them. We're going to send it to – let's send it to uh, Chickster first since ah. we uh, ended with him last. We're going to flip well, it around. What are our thoughts? Well, sir, thank you. Um, So I, I did agree. I think I think it was Miranda that said it uh, or someone said it, but Duke, Duke has – they've had, you know, two lower seed games. But, you know, and that's my whole thing with playing lower seed games. It's like you can't control who you play. You know, they can't they can't control that they played a what was it like a Vermont and then playing, you know, a fucking who was it? James Madison. Uh, James, James Madison. Like, even though James Madison looked pretty good against Wisconsin, like they can't control who they play. You know. Uh Duke did what they had to do. They had to go take care of business. Okay. Now, am I gonna sit here and say that I thought Duke would be here? No, I had him upset by James Madison. But you know, <laughs> that I'm I'm not gonna lie here. I'm not I'm not a liar. Okay. Uh however like they they do have what they had to do. I I still have Houston, um, but man, Houston does scare me. Houston's been scary for me like these past few years. Sometimes I'm like, dude, can you just guys go fucking win? Like the San Diego State game, I'm like, bro, not not San Diego State. Oh, what San Diego State? I'm like, like please, just just no, not yet, not San Diego State. Who did they play? 
Uh, fuck, I'm having a Texas A&M. aneurysm. A&M. Thank you. Texas A&M, thank you. I'm having an aneurysm. Uh, but no, like, can you guys, can you guys just go finish the game and win the game? Like, what are we waiting for? I, I always feel like Houston's waiting for something. Like, stop waiting. Go fucking win a game. That's going to be hard to do uh, against a Duke. Like I said, I'm going to stick with my original Final Four, and I'm going to pick Houston. But I don't feel good about it after watching how Duke played. Even though the Duke played as uh, played too lower, lower seated, they played really well. Um, I think it's going to be a good game for both of them. And I think this is this is going to be telling of both of them how they play against each other. Is Duke for real? Can Houston beat the allegations of choking? Like the, this is going to be a good matchup for them. Um, I think this might carry over into the next few rounds and for them. So um, I'm going to stick with Houston. I don't feel good about it. I can be persuaded, uh, but we'll see. I think I'm going to, I'm going to put in my two cents here really quick. Cause I only have like one real note here. Uh, I watched the Houston game last night against A&M. Uh, this Jamal Sheed kid. Good. He's a fucking shed. hooper. He's a fucking, fucking hooper. Shed. Oh Sorry. yeah. Shed. Jamal shed. That dude. Like he, whatever NBA team picks him up is going to be really happy because that dude, that dude is a baller for sure. That's that, I think that's that, that Hamilton's guy. That's yeah. that I was going to say, of course, I go on Twitter after the game and he's like, he, he feels like a Miami Heat player. I'm like, why am that's I not? Man is, yo. Like, come on, man. I, I, I know it when I see it. To, to be fair, he's kind of got a point. <laughs> he he kind of he kind of plays like a my Mi, Miami Heat already. Miami player. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going with Houston just because this this shed kid convinced me that he's 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 absolutely legit. I'm is, going. Is he Houston. a stallion? Is he a stallion, Garrett? Does he I, get he might he stand? might get the stallion tag. I'll be honest. Like I don't I don't know much about giving out stallion tags in college basketball, but oof. He might be a stallion. Like he a stallion. if he if he, did, if he plays really well and and uh, Houston wins, he might be, get the stallion tag for you. He might. All right. I'm All right. Him. We're gonna send it to Anthony Miranda. Miranda, who are we picking here? Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to probably stick with Houston. They were um, – I was kept going between them and UConn to win it all in general. Uh, Duke really surprised me. I thought they were upset potential in the second round. Or some people even I saw had Vermont in the first round. But I don't think – as much as I like Jared McCain and I like Rune for him, I don't think another 30-point performance would be pretty insane that – I think the reason they did look so good is they just weren't missing, specifically him. I think he shot eight for 11. Um, but they, I mean, they definitely have the talent, but I think we'll see how they stack up against that tough Houston defense. And as much as it worried me the way it played out that last game, I thought the fouls were a little extra, a little excessive. I didn't think there should have been that many free throw shot to even make that a game. So I'm going to take the, take Houston, hopefully, They'll uh, write the wrong of why that game got so close against Texas A&M and come back. I'm sure Kelvin Sampson will uh, have him ready for a Duke. Uh, also worth noting really quick, so we got Houston moving on a majority. It is worth noting, uh, Colt, Coach Shoulderhair called the, the A&M play at the end of uh, regulation last night. I, I said that they should have had that kid. I think it was Wade. His last name's Wade, I think, Hannafin. Uh, Wade, Wade, had, Taylor. Wade Taylor. Yeah, Wade Taylor. Thank you. Should have used him as a decoy, and they did. And then the guy they got was wide open, and he just happened to hit it. So, not not to flex or anything, but uh, Coach Shoulder here might have some chops in college basketball. Uh, well, I think, like I said, hold no, on, real quick. I just think the most inspiring uh, story in the in the NCAA double tournament or whatever is uh, that Flip is okay and he's playing really good ball right now. Uh, Having almost his leg amputated, I, I just this is some really inspiring stuff that he is doing. This he's got him in the Sweet Sixteen, Elite Eight, almost. I mean, like give him comeback player in the year in the same season. I mean, I'm just so glad he's okay. It was a serious, uh, hit. it was a serious hit. It's true. Yeah, uh, serious Jack hit to his Biden, ego. Matt Hannifin, who are we? Uh, are you guys leading Houston as well? Um, yeah, I'm leading Houston. Uh, I I, I think it's gonna be really close and i think it's going to be a dog fight but i i don't know at this time of year i rely on teams who are tough and who i know are mentally oh, tough and i and i think that houston is more mentally tough than duke is and so that's that's where i'm leaning i thought filipowski was really good yesterday i thought Jared mccain was really good yesterday i like what i saw from tyrese proctor um but i just think guys like Jamal Shedd, like LJ Cryer, like Jawan Roberts, like those guys are just, I think they're tougher. 
Um, and I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a grimy game. Like I think it's going to be a back and forth game and I'm just taking, I, I think Houston pulls that, uh, pulls it out in the end. Yeah. Um, I've been ecstatic with how this Duke team's played. Cause I did not feel confident about them at all. Like getting to the second weekend, I think it's a dub no matter what, especially in Shire's second year. Like despite what my dad might say in his, pissed off rants when they ultimately lose coming up on Friday. Like it is still a good year and you're definitely seeing progress moving forward. I'm excited about next year. I just think the guards for Houston are going to be what wins it. The experienced guards, because you have Cryer and Shed. And I think that's going to carry them through just the overall experience. Duke, I don't think they've got that it factor about them. They had two pretty favorable matchups, I will say. And again, you can only beat who's in front of you. Yeah. But it's, the James Madison team, I didn't get to watch the game because I had to play in uh, my own game. So that was the one game I didn't get to watch. And, of course, it happened to be fucking when Duke was playing. But anyway, um, I think they may have just spent all their energy in Wisconsin, not had that same kind of fight and desire because they got past that one game. Now we got to go play Duke. Probably not going to win this one too. I don't know. Dukes look good. I just think Houston's experience is going to carry them through. Still going to be a great year for Duke. Really excited about next year with who's coming in. But, yeah, I just think Houston's experience is going to do it. Duke's also 0-5 since 94 against higher-seeded teams, so I don't see that ending here. I, I think Houston well, really needs this game, though, to beat the allegations. I think this would really help their case for themselves um, and, like, their mentality. I know you said they're a mentally tough team, but, like, you know, having that thing weighing over you that, oh, you know, we're known as chokers, I think beating a really good Duke team will, will help with that and hopefully push them to the final. I just want to say, too, with that Duke started, like McCain started four for five or five, you know, five for six or something, and Proctor started two for three. They just, J JMU got buried so early to where once you already have that big of a league, a lead and you're Duke and, you know, they're JMU, it's it's what so much extremely tougher for obviously a Cinderella run to keep happening when the team you're playing against starts off like f uh, probably overall like seven for ten from three. So it just it wasn't, wasn't even in the cards. Yeah. Listen, is if especially this time of year, if you let a team get hot early, like you put yourself in a hole like that, it's really hard to climb back from, as we've seen a couple times in the tournament so far. Uh, least, other uh, match, you should win the game if you're up 17. Okay, let's go. Oh, come I, feel like, I feel like that was a 99. Yeah, that was, that's on me. That's oh, on me. That was my bad. I feel like that was that a was, shot. Matt Hanson, would you like bad. to respond? He's he's not wrong. So no. there was a ninety nine point six percent chance Nevada won that game. See, I feel we, like that's nastier than me. right now. I, I think that was nastier Hanifin. than me. I'm that's not gonna lie. That was oh. <laughs> I no, I graduated from Nevada. I was I was so mad after the loss. I like tried to watch the highlights one time, and then I literally just took a nap. I didn't. I was so angry. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> you were willing to watch the highlights. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, I'm a weirdo. Like when my team loses, I have to watch like the whole game over again. To just, oh and then I was trying to watch. I was trying to watch the post conference, but they didn't have it up yet, and so I watched it after I woke up. I'm no, I'm like yeah, though. No. That, that game needs to die. Real. That game needs to die and go away. <laughs> I'm good now. I'm good now. After that, shit, crazy. Hopefully, this is the last time the Wolfpack come up in this stream. I have an odd feeling yes. that it will for some strange reason. <laughs> Moving on to the other game in the South, we've got the 11th uh, seeded NC State, who uh, I think Fida mentioned it earlier, who are playing with their hair on fire right now. They needed to win the tournament to get into the into the dance. They did. They're here in the Sweet 16. Marquette with Shaka Smart. Can they beat the allegations with Shaka Smart being known as a bit of a chokester as well? Yep. We're going to start with Jackson Fida on this one. Do NC State continue the Cinderella story, or does Marquette move on? So I've got Marquette in my title game. I am relying on them like with everything I have. And because of that, they're going to choke. And NC State's going to win this game. We DJ, just need to add back donuts. That's all we need to do. Yeah. <laughs> we'll back to say no, but DJ Burns is actually unreal. Like, he's actually unreal. He's a Big unicorn boy. in the basketball world. I think Jay Billis put it best when he said he's got the body of one offensive lineman. No, take that back. Two offensive linemen, but the feet of a ballerina. Dude, it makes no sense, but he's actually so good. And I'm I'm honestly with the story on this one. Last time they won the uh, NCAA tournament, what year was that, 87? That was with Valvano. They needed a win. 85, was it? I think so. Yeah. Needed a win it to get in, then won the uh, NCAA tournament. 
And if Kevin Keats wins an NCAA tournament, I'm I'm not going to understand the world anymore. But honestly, this team, they're on fire. Like, it's kind of hard to pick against them. I'm Marquette got through. Um, the Colorado game was tough. Like, I didn't really feel confident in them in that game at all. NC State, I know they had to go to OT, but they're also going against the best shooter the game has ever seen in Jack Golke. So it's kind of hard to, like, give them crap for that, you know? So – but in all seriousness, I'm actually going NC State. I, I'm feeling the run. So one thing I do want to mention really quick, uh, because, yeah, like you said, NC State's really hot right now. They played uh, five games in five days to get into the dance and then their first two-round games. But now they've had five days off. Their last game was on the 21st, I believe, is what I saw it right. Uh, they'll have two days off. I No, wait, what the fuck? Six days off. Their last game was on the 23rd. you think I'd become prepared. So I wonder if that all that mojo and momentum that they had with playing all these games in a row might cool off a little bit, but I'm curious to see if they continue that stretch of dominant play. Matt Hannafin, what are your thoughts? Um, I think I'm I'm leaning Marquette in this. I like their guard play a lot more. Tyler Kolick is one of my favorite upcoming NBA prospects just because of his floor, his vision, his ability to see the floor, his, his ability to control the game whenever the ball's in his hands. Um, Cam Jones has been exceptional. Um, this is, I think, Marquette's like first week 16 in over a decade. Um, at, even after falling apart the last few years with Shaka Smart as, as head coach, I don't know. I think, again, I think this is a close game, but I think I like Marquette's defense. Um, even though NC State's hot, I don't know if Marquette has like a complete matchup for DJ Burns unless it's like Oso Ikadaro. Um, but even then, I still think Marquette's guard play edges them out in a game like this. Just because, it, it, again, like you, you've got to find a way to get stops. And I trust Marquette more than I trust NC State. And so that's that's where I'm leading in this. So we've got one for each. Uh, last Marquette Sweet 16 was 2013, so uh, Matt hit it right in the head. We're going to go to Chickster here to split the tie we have right now. NC State or Marquette? Uh Matt Hannafin, you talked about uh, Tyler Kolick's uh, vision. Have you seen DJ Burns' vision with the ball? He controls the game with the ball in his hands. Don't let him. Don't let that man go to his left hand. He goes to his left hand. He's scoring that John like it ain't nothing. He's scoring that. You hit. say you could say like you know you could literally say the same thing about Kolick though. Don't let him go to his left. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm just joking here. I'm still. Listen, pure basketball sense. Pure basketball. You know this is what I know about basketball. I'm picking Marquette. But basketball is a wonderful sport where sometimes shit doesn't make sense. I'm going Marquette. I would not feel right in the head if I didn't go Marquette here. But if NC State wins, I'm not necessarily mad about it. Um, I have Marquette losing uh, to Houston in my bracket in the next round anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm still going to go Marquette here. I think Shaka Smart, I'm, I'm going with Shaka Smart beats the allegations as well. Uh, like Houston, Houston needs to beat the allegations. Marquette. You know, and Shaka Smart needs to beat the allegations. I'm with that. Um, I would love – I just want to – I just hope a good game. I just want to see how they play against DJ Burns. Uh, he's just fascinating to watch um, because, it may, like uh, Fida said, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, but it's awesome to watch. And, you know, the dude's got vision. He's he's big body in everybody. He's going to his left, scoring with his left. and Like, it's nothing. I just – I like watching him play basketball. But I'm going to go Marquette here. Uh, Marquette is favored by six and a half over under at 150. Even, uh, we got a two to one Marquette over NC State. Anthony Miranda is Marquette moving on, or is it coming down to me? Um, I don't know, it's tough because I thought, I mean, I just didn't believe in NC State. I thought they they had their miracle run in the tournament five games in five days. Going into that tournament, that's a 17 and 14 team. I just, I get, I guess they're hot. But I'm probably I'm gonna probably go with Marquette. But I am worried that statistically or analytically, uh, that's the only 11 seed. Everything else is pretty chalk. So I wonder what the stats would look like for 11 seeds moving on to Elite Eight, especially in past tournaments, because it feels like it has been a little bit more upset, heavy, or deeper runs. So that would be my one pause. Maybe, maybe the uh, the Cinderella run continues. But if not, for the same reasons that Matt said earlier, huge Tyler Kolick fan. Uh, Cam Jones is great with them and did really good when Kolick was out the lineup. And then I'm actually an um, Iguodaro fan, too. I actually really like his game. So I'm going to go with the 
the talent of Marquette. So we've got Marquette moving on. Uh, I just looked it up. There have been nine 11 seeds who have advanced to the Elite Eight in tournament history. The first one was LSU in 86, and the last team to do it was UCLA in 2021. We cannot forget Loyola Chicago in 2018 as well. They were an 11 seed who advanced to the Elite Eight. We've got Marquette moving on, moving down to the Midwest. Garrett, well, hold on, Garrett. What was your pick? What were we going to uh, go with? I, I, I would have picked. Um, I would have picked Marquette as well. I think okay. that the time off for NC State, not playing for six days, might have hurt their momentum a little bit. I think, yeah, like you guys said, Marquette's just the more talented team. Uh, Purdue, the one seed in the in the region, playing against Gonzaga, who had a great showing against Kansas. Um, we're gonna sh- we're let's throw it to uh, let's throw it to Miranda first. This is one. Um, I'm not exactly sure because I would have. I, I had Purdue. I had this Purdue Gonzaga matchup happening um, in my brackets. I went Purdue the one seed. I thought the Zach Eady, you know, or Zach Eady led obviously, but um, getting bounced first round last year, the Virginia storyline, you know, maybe they make it the whole way, win it. I did have them going a little bit further, and they, obviously they looked fantastic against Utah State. Um. But I've I really liked the uh, the Zags in the tournament so far. So without fully looking into it too much, more, I'd have to do more. But right now, based off feelings, I might go Zags over Purdue, and I guess I'll fall back on the. I still don't love Purdue's guard play. That's what plagued them last year. I know they made some improvements. They are improved, but it's not selling it for me. And I'll take the the Zags. Um, I'll take the Zags guards, and then hopefully a uh, Grammy K. Former Mountain West as well as a great game. Gonzaga has won both their tournament games so far by 21 points each. They beat uh, McNeese State in the first round, 86-65. They beat Kansas in the uh, round of 32, 89-68. Uh, let's go to Jackson Fida. So I was dead wrong about both of these teams because I had Gonzaga losing to McNeese and then Purdue losing to Utah State. So dead wrong. Both these teams look like – incredibly good like in Zaga out of nowhere I feel like I didn't see it coming I know a lot of people didn't see it coming and they just blew can I mean Kansas obviously down some players some key players McCuller but they just blew him out of the water I gotta go Purdue though this feels a little Virginia you know a little redemption year I don't know if they're gonna get all the way to the <laughs> win the title. A little Virginia year. Yeah. I'm, gonna coin that. I'm gonna coin that but um <laughs> I think they. I think this team's got Final Four on their minds, and it's now it's within sight. They're so two games away. I like Gonzaga. I like how they've looked, but I just feel like this Purdue team's on a mission right now. Zach Eady is on a mission right now, and I think that's going to get him through this game. Matt Hannafin, are uh, are the Boilermakers moving on, or does Gonzaga get a win here? Um, I think Purdue wins this, and I wasn't a huge believer in. Purdue, I like. I was a little more skeptical of Purdue because of the guard play. To Jackson's point earlier, um, I do like Braden Smith. I think he has gotten better. Fletcher Lawyers, obviously, they're the, this this group is an exceptional three point shooting team, which gives them um, an advantage in a game like this. The thing that worries me the most is Gonzaga. They're not deep, and so let's say Zach Eady's a guy who I mean he's a unicorn because he's so tall. He's so skilled with like his passing, his rebounding, his shooting, his touch, his physical, like him establishing position in the post. Like he's just such a unique player in that facet. And so if you get into foul trouble in a game like this, kind of like what happened to Utah State, I think that's where the pieces begin to to crumble for you for a little bit. And Gonzaga is not a team that has a deep bench. And so that that's what worries me in a game like this. EK's fine. Like, EK, obviously, like, again, former Mountain West guy, EK was really good at Wyoming um, for a few years. But I don't see – like, he's 6'9". Like, I don't know what you're throw. I mean, you obviously, you're throwing the kitchen sink at a guy like Zach Eady because, again, he's so unique. <laughs> but what – like, I, don't, I, I have a hard time seeing Purdue getting beaten in a spot like this if ED goes off and they get into foul trouble with Gonzaga. And that's like just my biggest hesitation with picking Gonzaga. They have the offense and like they have the offense to compete. They have their defense has been like pretty solid. And so like I'm not worried about it from like I think they it's just getting stops could be a little bit it, I think the calculus of getting stops is a little bit 
harder in a game like this as opposed to um, a Kansas. So that's I'm leading Purdue here. Uh, Purdue is going to move on. Uh, just wanted to note really quick, Purdue won their opening round matchup against Grambling State 78-50 to and then dismantled Utah State by 39 yesterday. Uh, we cannot forget the last man on the panel. Before we move on, Chickster, did you have Purdue as well? Uh, no, I had Gonzaga, and I wouldn't feel right if if I didn't go with my like Elite Eight and Final Four that I have. And if I, if I feel like if I'm a wavering Wanda, it's just bad juju. I, I went with Gonzaga, um, and really my main thing is uh, it, it was Gonzaga's offense, but it, it was also coaching too. Like, dude, do I do I trust who do I trust more, Mark Few or do, Matt Painter? And I, I trust Mark Few. Like, and it shows. Like that that guy, like, you know, Gonzaga was one of those teams that as fighters like, uh, our, our this is not like a Gonzaga team like that we're kind of used to. And Mark Few is like, fuck you, and watch this. He. he like he actually watched Jackson fight to say that about him, and then so he had to go prove him wrong. Um, and so I'm I don't know I I, I see what Matt Hannafin saying about Zach, Zach uh, Edie, but like I don't know I think Mark Few is a good enough coach that he might be able to counteract it maybe. Then that that's that's my thought process going in, and the offense will take care of itself. Um, but I'm kind of just trying to bullshit my way into picking Gonzaga. Uh, I. What's important to know is on the last video, I did say I had Kansas that they were healthy. As soon as I found out uh, McCuller was uh, was hurt, I changed I changed my picks to not from Kansas. I went to Gonzaga, and then I had Way Gonzaga making. No, that's that's called that's called smart because and strategic because uh, there was an injury Wanda. to the Kansas lineup. All right, you can call me Wanda all you want, brother, but I I made a decision and it's working out. Um, but yeah, I, I chose Gonzaga here, so. Purdue right, did I, beat the Zags early in the season, too, I think by, like, 10. Yeah. <laughs> All news. Uh, they did win by 10. Good memory. Shout out uh, Jackson Fighter there. Ah. All right. The last game yeah. in the Sweet 16, we've got the three-seeded Creighton against two-seeded Tennessee. We're starting with Matt on this one. Uh, what are we thinking here? Creighton. I just think they're more – I think they're more talented. Love and – like Creighton did give us a little bit of a scare against Oregon. Like yep. that that was a little bit of a scare, but they got Trey Alexander, Baylor Shireman, Stephen Ashworth, Ryan Cockburn. Like I just think they're more talented. Again, this is another team where it's like if they get in foul trouble, that's a little bit of a problem because this is a team that doesn't use their bench at all. But um all you need to do like Tennessee shot like dog water against Texas and kind of barely survived. I do like Dalton Connect a lot. I do like Zakai Ziegler, but I still think that um, I think Creighton out, outlasts him in, in a spot like this, even though I think Tennessee's defense is better. Um, and usually I would trust the team more who gets stops, but I, I think Creighton's offense will just be a smidge too much for, for Tennessee in the spot, especially if Tennessee shoots like they did um, on Saturday, which I don't know if that will be the case. You never know with stuff like this, but I'm going Creighton. We're going to throw it to Jackson Fida. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I like Creighton too, and I've liked Creighton for a while. Um, I like their guard play. I think they've got some um, – what's his name? Shireman, great player. Ashworth, I remember him at Utah State. Pissed me off then. Now I actually kind of enjoy watching him play. He's an absolute baller. And then you have Trey Alexander, obviously. And you also have Cockburner, who's really good at what he does, soft hands. I'm liking them. I think Tennessee – Obviously, I think they're a good team. I think Schickster said they were frauds last time out. I think they kind of proved okay. that wrong so far, but I do think they will, be, yeah, they will be seen as frauds in this game. I'm, I'm taking Crane. I think they're the better team. I think they're gone through. Uh, the dog water stats from the game against Texas, they shot 33.8% from the field and 12% from three. That is three for 25 for those curious. Not a, Not typically a recipe for success. But Texas also shot like dog water. That's what helped them move on. We're going to go with Chickster here for his thoughts. Is Creighton moving on, or does Tennessee get some love here? I still think Tennessee's ass. Now, I don't know who the dumb fuck is that chose <laughs> St. Peter's, and, you know, they lost by, like, 30. Like, what a fucking dummy. But I still think Tennessee's ass, and I think the Texas game showed it. Um, Like, yeah, when one team shoots like, like shit, yeah, you're like, okay, but – when both teams shoot like shit, 
Hell no. Like I'm I am not I'm not with that. I'm I think Tennessee's ass. I do have Creighton in my final four. I feel like I have to stick with that. I'm going with Creighton. All right, just to get everybody involved, Anthony Miranda. What are your thoughts? I I kind of agree. I was I'm actually I really like Creighton a lot. Even though I did have Oregon upsetting them in to go to the Sweet Sixteen, but unfortunately that did not happen. But um well, unfortunately for my bracket, obviously. But I do like uh, I like Crane a lot. I was never that big on Tennessee as much as it seemed like everybody else was uh, during the regular season. Same. But give me, uh, yeah, give me. They have, I think they have more players that can get hot. I do all as well. Really like Cole Brenner. Um, besides having shooters around him, a little bit of inside and out scoring for Creighton. Um, so I will, yeah, I'm going Creighton. Going with uh, with the squad. I think in my vendetta bracket in the group that we did, my official bracket, I, I think I had Creighton in the national championship game. So yeah, I would be, I don't want to be a wavering Wanda like some of us on the panel and flip flop. So I'm going to, I would have went with Creighton here as well. Uh, our elite eight matchup here out west, out east rather, is UConn against Iowa State. Um, we're going to go to Chickster first. Chickster, what are your thoughts? Uh, y'all know how I feel about UConn. UConn's winning the damn thing. They win the whole damn thing. But show, put it in there. Put it in there. All right, we got one for UConn, quick and easy. Uh, let's go Jackson fight it here. Yeah, I'm going to UConn. I still think they're the best team in the country. I don't think anyone's touching them, at least not till the Final Four. Like, Iowa State, really good, really hot team. But UConn, I, I still think they're the best team overall, most complete team. Yeah, they're going to win this game. Uh, Miranda, should I assume that you're also going with UConn? Uh, yes, I think finally I will be able to say confidently that I just wasn't a huge fan of Iowa State. Just it's just their offense doesn't do it for me. So if if the Illinois doesn't get the upset, for surely UConn should be moving on here. Or and Illinois then Matt, State. I'm assuming it's uh, it's uh, all UConn here. I say UConn, but I think I'm a lot more hesitant than everyone else on the panel. Because I think this is the one team from like a, a schematic defensive perspective can fluster Stefan Castle, can fluster Tristan Newton in a spot like this. Or at least not – fluster is probably the long word, but like slow them down a little bit. Um, like I, I think Keyshawn Gilbert can make it hard on them. I think Lipsy can make it hard on them. I still do like UConn because, again, to everyone's point on here, I think they're the better – all around team, but I don't think it's going to be like a foregone conclusion when it's all said and done. Like, I think, I It'll think Iowa cool. State can hang with them for a little bit, but I, I think UConn will, will eventually win this game. Um, cause uh, I also just trust UConn more in a spot like this, but I, I, I do think Altsberger, uh, TJ Altsberger makes it a little bit tough on some of UConn's key pieces, but I don't see it lasting for a full 40 minutes. Garrett, you had you had you had Marquette in the final. I, I checked for you. Oh, so you had okay. Marquette. Well, then I had him in the final four. Then no. Uh, yes, you did have him in the final four. Okay, yes. sounds good. Thank thank you for that. No, uh, I didn't. I didn't miss anybody before we move on. Correct. Everybody got I don't it. Know. You're the host. Well, I just I just want to make sure. Last time I got called out for clicking one team too early before everyone said their input. So Absolutely. I don't want to forget anybody. Good. I'm glad we we learned. All right. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, Wanda. All right, moving on to the West. We've got the number one seed, North Carolina Tar Heels, going up against Arizona. Uh, let's go to Miranda first. Who do you have in the Elite Eight? Uh, I'll keep this one short because it sounds like some other people had some good things to say for this matchup. But uh, I, like I said, I had – I think this should be a really good game too. But uh, I had Arizona as my one of my dark horse teams to win it all. So I'm sticking with Arizona. Let's hear from Chickster. Uh, I, as I said earlier, I think UNC is the second best team in the tournament right now. Um, and I, I'm kind of sad that uh, UNC and UConn won't play each other in the final. But I want to go North Carolina. Uh, let's hear from Matt Hannapin. I think North Carolina perseveres. I'm just going to keep it short and simple. I think, hey, I think they win. Easy. I like that. Uh, Jackson Fida, are you making it a sweep? Um, 
Yeah, I'm going Carolina, and I think this will be fun. But I also have seen stuff where people wonder, is Caleb Love a double agent? Um, they were wondering that when they lost in the Pac-12 tournament so Carolina could get the one seed. Maybe. Fun to see Maybe. how he plays in this game. He's either going to go off and Arizona wins, or he plays like dog shit and Carolina wins. I think that's going to be my thing here. We get to see if he's a double agent or not. And in my head canon, that's what I really want to see here. But all serious is Carolina, better team. I think they're, again, solid. I really like Armando Baycott. I think he's an absolute tank in the post. And uh, with um, Davis as well, yeah, they're going to the Final Four. Curious to note, before we move on, the last six times Arizona has played in the state of California in the NCAA tournament, they have lost. This game is taking place in Los Angeles. For those who are curious. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, we're going over to the South region. We've got Houston against Marquette. Uh, I have Marquette in my national championship game, apparently. So I, I would be remiss if I didn't take Marquette here as well. So I'm going to throw out my vote first. That's all I got. I'm going to go with Marquette. Uh, let's hear from Matt Hannafin. I'm going Marquette again. I think the guard play edges out, even though Jamal Shedd is one of my favorite players in this entire tournament and will be one of my favorite second round to to, to undrafted players. In, Potential stallion you know, Jamal Shedd. Yeah. Um, no, I just think I think Marquette their I think their offense is good enough to to get by. Um and I and I trust them getting stops. Even though, again, I said I lean toward the more mentally tough team, but I do think Marquette is mentally tough to some extent. Um, Jackson, so does Marquette. Uh, does Marquette beat the allegations and make it to the Final Four? Well, I just had him losing in the last round, so naturally I'm going to have him winning in this round. Um, of course. Of course, right? But I actually, like, if they get past NC State, I'm feeling good about them. At that point, I feel like we've seen enough to know that they are legit. And – yeah, I'm liking Shaka Smart to get to the Final Four if that is the case. Again, I have him in my title game, so I'm going to stick with him for that one sole reason. Great game, but yeah, let's go Marquette. This one should be a really fun one to watch for sure. Uh, Chickster, who do you have? Uh, I have Houston. I have Houston in the final. Um, but I will be – I will honestly, I will be happy with you know either of these teams winning. If both of these teams get out of the Sweet 16 and they play each other – um, I genuinely believe that one of these two teams will go to the final. So um, I think I think the, I think this is a good matchup. I think I'm I'm gonna be you know making sure I watch this matchup for sure. I went with Houston, um, but like I said, I'll be happy with either either one of these guys making it and hopefully going to the championship. But Houston's my pick. And then Anthony is a clean sweep for. Uh, well, I guess it's not a sweep because Alex literally just said he's picking Houston. But are you with Marquette or Houston? I'm also going to go Houston. I had them in a lot of my title games. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Kelvin Sampson. To, I don't both these teams kind of, yeah, have it, yeah, underperformed in past or just Houston specifically cannot get over the hump and uh, tear down the nets. But, for, I mean, it's like Chickster was just saying, it's a great game. Actually, all of these games have been amazing. I, I know it's a lot of chalk, but so far the tournament has been a lot of chalk. But if we really get these matchups, like this is going to be such a fun, uh, fun couple of days of basketball. You but don't I'm have gonna, to remind gonna... me about chalk. Good lord, yeah. the underdog money line chalk oh, yeah. crushed in the second round. So sick, absolutely sick. For those who uh, may not have uh, caught the first video, uh, the opening round and the second round, I bet every single underdog's money line. I was pretty profitable. In the round of 64, 29% ROI did pretty well. Uh, we got smoked in the second round. Uh, dogs went 1-17. Shout out Clemson for being the only underdog who won in the second round. So thanks for that. Uh, we're going down to the Midwest here. We've got Purdue versus Creighton. We're going to go to Jackson first. Who is making the Final Four to play against Marquette? Initially, I had Creighton going all the way to the final four, but that's just because I didn't have faith in Purdue. But now that I see what this Purdue team has been looking like recently, I'm going to go with Purdue. Again, I used the term earlier, Virginia E. This team seems like a team that just really wants that final four. Zach Eady really wants that final four. Matt Painter wants that final four. And I think they're going to get it. I think they've got all the tools they need to get to that stage. 
I'm not saying they're going to go and win the whole thing and that they're the best team in the country, but I do think this is a team that should get to the final four. I think there's obviously a possibility where Creighton comes out on top. They've got a guy who I think could possibly cause some problems for Zach Eady, but I do think they will come out on top. So the last appearance for Purdue in the Final Four was 1980. So it's a bit of a stretch since then. This would be pretty huge for the Boilermakers. Chickster, who do you have advancing to the Final Four? Uh, I, Jack, I think Jackson hit the nail on the head uh, as far as, like, I didn't really trust in Purdue. So I obviously I chose uh, Gonzaga last round. So I'm still not the biggest believer in Purdue. However, if we get this matchup uh, – my my mind says it should be Purdue, but like I said, can't be a wavering Wanda. I picked Creighton in my final four. Got to stick with it. I got to stick with it. So I'm, I'm going to take Creighton, um, but I, I do, if this does happen, I could definitely see a scenario where Purdue uh, wins this game, but uh, I picked Creighton, so obviously Creighton's going to win, right? Right? Please tell me. Yes. Please tell me yes. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Uh, this is the second time... In, in this bracket, we had Creighton moving on. It is the second time Creighton has made the Elite Eight. This would be the first time Creighton has ever made the Final Four in their program's history. Uh, Miranda, who do you have? Uh, I, it's tough because, like I said, I had Purdue advancing um, last round over Zags, like in my actual bracket. But I have a feeling it went Zags. But obviously now with this choice, I kind of wanted to go Purdue. But um, we'll see. Yeah, I go Purdue, especially because what Matt was saying, the team is, um, uh, if the Zags, you know, have a shorter rotation, get in foul trouble. Well, that's Creighton. I don't, they have a short rotation as well. So I'm worried about foul trouble here. Although I do really like the Kalkbrenner matchup. I think that would be amazing. Um, and I don't know, I want to flip flop because then I'm, I would take the guards and um, Baylor Sharman, Alexander and Ashworth over Purdue's guards in a second. So... Uh, if, if I'll go Creighton with y'all. I'll go Creighton with y'all. Okay, so we've got, what, one for Purdue, two for Creighton? So then it's up to Matt to send Creighton to the Final Four, or is it a split and it comes down to me? I'm going back and forth with this. Miranda point. Creighton he, he's going, he's going so back and forth that his mic's lagging right now, so give him a second. But he's, My mic's lagging? It, yeah, bit. your your mic your mic sounds kind of bugged. Oh, I mean, there you go. Right, right there sounds fine. Okay, right there. maybe it's because where I was. Maybe it's because where I was talking from. Potentially. Um, <laughs> I think I lean Purdue here, but you could. It's this is honestly a coin flip for me, just from a matchup perspective. Again, Creighton has as short of a rotation as Gonzaga did. And my rationale last time was. Well, guess what? They're gonna foul trouble could be a real thing, um, in a game like this, and you just you just don't know. But I think Creighton's firepower still keeps him in a game like this. Um, I'm gonna lean Purdue. I don't feel good about it. I'm gonna plug my nose and um, just look away. But I, I, I'll lean Purdue in this spot. So. so that is two to two, and it comes down to me. I, I did ask Chris. I, I asked I asked Bagdonis. I don't know if he'll answer me in time, but I asked him Purdue or Creighton in the Slack chat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and we just got to oh pick God. the opposite of that, guys. I think We, we just got to pick the opposite. But I don't think he's going to answer back. So I, it, it is late for him over there. But we, we will find that out tomorrow because he will answer. <laughs> In in the efforts to not be a wavering Wanda, I have said before that I had Creighton in my uh, my final four, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lean with Creighton here. Uh, I I may not know a ton. I may not be a smart man, but something about Purdue just seems they just seem fishy to me. So they got they got a little smell, a little odor, mm-hmm. a little you smell a little waft, a little waft of fish. What is that? Some just Pussy. some just seems weird. Sorry, that's on me. That's on me. It's pleasant. <laughs> oh my no, god. Okay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Pressing on. I didn't say I anything. It. God damn it. I <laughs> fucking missed it. Son yeah. of a bitch. It's probably something I shouldn't have said. It's all right. Here we go. Well, <laughs> I, I, I can assume what you said then. That's I great. Really We're just going to scoot past it then. Okay. UConn and North Carolina, the one seeds left in the tournament. Who is advancing to the national That's championship game? That is true. That is that is a good thing to note as well. I, uh, I don't let, think. Statistically, I, can't, I remember reading stats that that is like 
insane when that happens. It's been maybe once or twice or something. Now not for start. a while. Let's start. Let's start with Chickster. Uh, you know what it is, baby. I'm a Yukon. It's Yukon all the way. We, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I never wavered from this. Yukon has been the most uh, confident I've been about any any team uh, this year. So I'm I'm a, I'm gonna stick with Yukon. Uh, but like I said, I wish North Carolina was on the other side of this. I, I would love to see a Yukon and North Carolina matchup because I think those are the two best teams uh, in the tournament right now. But it kind of I mean it's a good Final Four matchup. But uh, I do, if, if I may be so bold, I do think the winner of the UConn North Carolina matchup does win the game or win the win the championship. But I'm gonna go. Uh, I know, uh, but I'm gonna go UConn. I'm gonna go UConn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. That was my original pick. This is my. Uh, this is not my final four. I lied. But I'm gonna go with uh, UConn in this game. We're just gonna go straight up on the cameras. We're gonna go up to Jackson. Jackson, who do you have? So I really like what Chickster just said. Um, I do agree with him. Whoever wins this game will, in fact, win the game. So with that in mind. Whoever wins this game you, will man. win the game. That yeah, is whoever true. Whoever wins this game is going to win Thank this you, game. Brother. Thank you, brother. <laughs> so with that Thank in you, mind, brother. I, I am so glad you are listening to me, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Tuesday, Tuesday. I am going UConn, though. Uh, again. Wait. Sorry, I, I, have to, I have to cut you off. I have to cut you off. Bagdona says Purdue. McDonald's went Purdue. Well, it's a good yeah, thing we're Creighton. pushing Creighton okay. through. Then. Creighton. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted yeah. to put an important, important update in that. Sorry, go ahead. If Dad, only yeah. he knew that he was doing this on, on, on camera. That's <laughs> true. That is yeah, true. We got to write that. We got to write. But, yeah, going back to this, I'm going <laughs> UConn. Uh, I think Carolina, this is the team that can beat UConn, in my opinion. Um, but I don't see it happening. The Duke fan in me doesn't allow it to happen. UConn wins this game, goes to the title game. Uh this this isn't the this is a coincidence, I promise, because this is the only like clean hoodie I had left. I am wearing a UNC hoodie for those who couldn't notice. So that is kind of coincidental that we have North Carolina in the final four. Uh I'm gonna go with UConn as well. Uh it just seems like they from top to bottom, they play offense the best, they play defense the best, they have one of the best coaches in the country. It just it's hard to envision a team beating this beating uconn right now uh continuing to go up on the cameras we've got matt here matt what are your thoughts it's so hard picking against uconn so i'm, I'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna be the one contrarian just to be a contrarian mm. i think i mean i think contrarian. i think uconn wins this <laughs> That's a I, don't right there. I don't know why that made me laugh but no i haven't seen matt hannafin's post lately he's like they eviscerate they lambast, and I was like, "Good God, bro! Lambast is a fucking word. I could, I, like, I can't believe it." I was like, "Man, Hannafan, I didn't. The vocabulary is nuts right now." I was just like, "I don't even know half it's of these point. words." It's on point. All right, Anthony, is it a clean sweep for UConn to get to the title game? Uh, yes, it is a clean sweep. All right, who gets the honors to play UConn in the national championship game? We've got Marquette against Creighton. We're going to go top to bottom again. We're going to start with Miranda. Um, the top, Garrett. I, I didn't I, want to I say, say that, but I'm not really giving my picks first. <laughs> I did want to say, I was trying to look it up. From what I saw, it only happened one time where three teams uh, from the same conference made the Final Four, and it was the Big East way back in, like, 1985 or something. So, um, But... I guess if this is the final four market, Creighton, I'm I'm tempted to rock with Marquette and Shaka Smart and say in uh, Tyler Kolick. I don't know; they're both pretty well. Um, they both got some stars I like on their team, but I, yeah, I would go Marquette. All right, so Anthony's got Shaka Smart beating the allegations. Does Matt have Shaka Smart beating the allegations? Yes. Um. Actually, no, I, I'm going to say Crate. I'm going to say Crate. Okay. For literally, okay. I, for, for, I just, I don't know. I don't he know. heard Shaka I, Smart, and he's like, hell no. I, he got afraid. He got afraid. <laughs> I really had no justification for that immediate abrupt switch, but normally I'm going to say Crate. All right, it's locked in. We got, we're got we split here, one apiece. Uh, Jackson, break the tiebreaker here. Who do you have? I pick Marquette, so give me Marquette. Nice and easy. We got 2-1 Marquette. Chickster, is Marquette advancing to the national championship game, or is it a split tie down to me? 
to me, Houston makes the championship game. But uh, seeing that this is isn't how the thank you, sir. I was just You're getting welcome. to that. If you would let me You're finish, welcome, brother. Don't ask me. Don't ask me to go and interrupt me. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. But uh, in this scenario, I do have Shaka Smart beating the allegation, so I'm gonna go Marquette here. All right. Well, uh, for what it was worth, it would have been three to two because I would have picked Creighton. But we've got UConn versus Marquette in the national championship game. Uh, we're going to start with Matt. Matt, who is taking home the national championship? UConn. Back Sorry. to back, like Jordan. I'm, just, I'm not. I'm not picking. I'm again. Like I have in my brackets for the sake of being different and trying to like in my like big money pools and stuff for trying to win money because the majority of people are picking UConn because they're the presumptive favorite for obvious reasons that we've talked about here. I've gone against UConn in a couple of these matchups for my own sake, but in my heart of hearts, I'm not picking against UConn because I don't think there's a team that's going to beat them. Unless if something drastic happens, it's March. It's madness. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen? But I'm gonna say I'm gonna say UConn. Raise, raise your hand if you're not taking UConn. All right, I'm not raising my hand. By the way, I was gonna say we so, can't can't see up. That's all right. So I, I I feel like UConn's the answer. All right, I guess nobody else wanted to talk, so we're just gonna no. Nah, you know we're we ain't gonna settle for that. I want I want to hear what Anthony and Jackson have to say. Anthony, who do you have? You have UConn for why? Yeah, for the for the same uh, reasons as Matt. Actually, I had um, you know Houston was my second pick, second most picked. Uh, sprinkled in that dark course Arizona a little bit. Um, same reasons also strategy to just try to gain more points. But when it comes down to it, I know it hasn't happened since Florida. But like I said, UConn through the tournament so far has looked untouchable. Um, if if I mean, I would think we, we, we were talking about the coach earlier of how his mindset, the mindset the team has, the chemistry amongst them. If they do get to this game, this national championship game, um, I think it's it's going to be a tough team to beat. And I, I do probably most likely see them going back to back. Jackson, why does UConn go back to back like the cover of Lethal Weapon? Well, A, bet, I, I still think they're the best, most complete team in the country. It just seems like the right group to go back to back with the right coach to go back to back. Like I couldn't see any other team doing what they're doing. I think what Hurley has done there is actually incredible. And he's the one to do it. Yeah, I think they're gonna win this game. They took care of them in the Big East title game. I don't see Marquette really doing any better than they did in that game. I mean, they they'll have Kolek for this game, so maybe that'll make a bit of a difference because he wasn't there in the Big East title game. Maybe it'll be closer. Maybe they can sneak it out, but I just don't see that happening. UConn was there last year. They won it last year. They're going to win it this year. All right. Chickster set off the vote for the the hands for all of us to pick UConn. Chickster, do you have any final thoughts to wrap us up here? Yeah, UConn's winning it all. Um, <laughs> don't say I didn't tell you so. Uh, oh, can I, can I ask something? I saw rumblings, and you know how the Twitter machine works. But, like... <laughs> Why why are there people saying that Dan Hurley is going to Kentucky? Like why why would he leave UConn? I feel like he has solidified himself uh at UConn. Uh the Big East is a power conference. Um I just don't see him like and I they're just rumors and that's just people talking, but like I think that's just kind of dumb, honestly. I think Dan Hurley stays at UConn. Um I I don't see the scenario where he is going to leave UConn for Kentucky. And you know, there's a whole situation with John uh, yep, John C. I'm not even gonna try because Cal I, Perry. I, Cal Perry. Cal Perry. I, Cal I, I knew who it was. It, it was the fact that I had to say his name, and I already embarrassed myself so much on the last video that I had I couldn't do it today. So, um, but I, I just don't like. And there's a whole situation with his contract. I don't, I don't, I just don't see where you're making like people in the Twitter machine are making that connection. Um, I think it's a dumb connection. Don't. Don't don't ever say if you're saying that stupid shit on tw- on Twitter. Don't say that shit ever again, it's, please. It's don't. Twitter, bro. Like, I understand. I just I just are, had to feel like I had to address dumb. that. I had to address it. Okay. I'm dumb too, but I'm not stupid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, trust me. I'm dumb on Twitter too. It's alright. Um. No. Yeah. Like, are we sure UConn's a worse job than Kentucky's right now? Just. I mean, shit. If like, they go back well, to back, why would you leave? Well, no, like, but like, just if you like, let's say you hypothetically fired. I mean, not let's say hypothetically, both coaches just retired. 
which job would you pick? Would you pick Kentucky? Would you pick UConn? I'd probably pick UConn. Yeah, a I would too. Point. So, I just had a feeling. I don't know. It's not a big gap, but I just think right now, UConn yeah. is is just a better gig, and a better conference. So, yeah. All right, there you have it. the The boys have spoken here at Vendetta. We've got UConn winning the national championship over Marquette. Thank you for watching the second chance bracket video. If you have not already subscribed to the YouTube channel here at Vendetta Sports Media YouTube, press that subscribe button. If you like the video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up. Comment down below if you if you think your picks are crazy. If you got UConn as well, let us know. If you don't have UConn, who you do have advancing to the national championship game. Thanks for watching another video here. Hold on, on question, Sports. question, question. Are we doing Final Four next week, guys? No, Garrett, don't get irritated with me. I, I know that look. Don't get that look with me. Are we I, going sure. for I week? literally have in recording pulled up, and then you wait to say something. I went through the entire closing spiel. I was raising my hand, but you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Alex. Are we? Are we guys? We're doing final four next week. Talk about the last last two games. Uh, sure. yeah. Same time, same time, same place. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, Garrett. Thank you for your lovely outro. You did a, such a great job. I'm sorry I had to interrupt you with a very important question. Well, you did a wonderful job, brother, and I appreciate you, brother. All right. Thank if you, you like the video, like the video. See ya.